Present. Hello, sir. Well, well, gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you. I'm very pleased that it was possible for us to get together this morning so I can express my deep conviction about the importance of NATO to the United States national security. It's no accident that we've seen an unprecedented period of peace in Europe for the last 40 years. The difference is NATO and the undiminished principle of collective security embodied in the NATO treaty. Let no one have any doubt the United States considers the continued deterrence of war in Europe and the continued health of NATO as fundamental and unalterable parts of our own national security. As part of that commitment to our security, I'm proud of the leadership that we've displayed, and I'd like to exercise a privilege as a host and relate to you my pride in the United States Armed Forces that make up a significant portion of the forces available to NATO. Over the last five years, we've worked hard to improve our military forces. I'm very happy to be able to say that those efforts are showing very positive results. Outstanding young men and women are serving with justifiable pride, doing an inspired and professional job of honing skills that go beyond anything money could buy, but that dedication and old-fashioned patriotism make an everyday reality. We've devoted great effort to restoring credibility to and deterrence capability to our strategic nuclear forces, effort that is worth every dollar its cost. Lest there be any chance of misunderstanding, let me repeat again the purpose of our strategic nuclear forces. They are to deter war, not to fight one. I've said many times that a nuclear war cannot be won and so must never be fought. But I understand that the only way to attain that goal is to be strong enough that our opponents are never tempted to start such a war. I spoke earlier of the collective security principle which is the bedrock of NATO. It's not just United States forces and weapons that provide such collective security. As the report Secretary Weinberger makes to Congress each year eloquently states, you contribute most significantly to NATO. And over the past years, these contributions have grown enormously. We're aware of that. However, I'm sure I tell you nothing new when I point out that the Warsaw Pact has been engaged for 20 years in an uninterrupted buildup of its forces, a buildup that far exceeds any reasonable need for defense of its own security. This simple fact forces us to the realization that if we're going to maintain NATO's record of the last 40 years, we must continue to make the sacrifices necessary to redouble our efforts. It's not a matter of choice, it's a matter of necessity. In this country, we have an old expression that roughly means that someone is making arguments and stressing points to an audience that already believes uh, your conclusions and knows the situation as well as you do. And that expression we have is called preaching to the choir. Well, I fear that I've been busy preaching to the choir just now but I want each one of you to know that we in the United States do understand the fundamental value of NATO to our own peace and security. We're dedicated to keeping the record of the last 40 years intact, and we appreciate your dedication to the same purpose. Welcome to our country, and we're delighted to have you here. Mr. President, may I, on behalf of all my brother chiefs of defense, uh, show our deep appreciation for the honor you've done us in what I know for you to, even in your busy schedule, is a particularly busy day to find the time to welcome us. We really are right. really grateful. It's got our tour off to an absolutely marvelous start. And may I also say, on behalf of all my colleagues, how delighted we are to see you back in full health and vigor again. Very nice to Thank you very to much. You. And, and, and can we just endorse the words you said from the engine room? Uh, we would like to assure you that we see NATO in good shape as well, with a lot of very real progress being made in a great many fields of the, uh, uh, the uh, conventional defense improvements and the, the military uh, 
framework, concept framework. Uh, all of this is excellent work, which is, I think, steadily improving the credibility and capability of the Alliance, and we are know how much we owe to you and your government in this process of, of improvement. And as you said yourself, sir, it isn't a coincidence that we've had 40 years of peace. We're all determined to keep it that way, and if we'd shown some of this unity of purpose in the past, we might not have got the trouble uh, that we've been in. And I hope you will view our visit uh, as an indication of this great unity of purpose. And thank you, sir, very much for starting it off on such a magnificent and marvelous note. We're very grateful. Thank well, you. thank you. I might say, I, I need no thanks for being here. Uh, Way deep buried within me is the second lieutenant of horse cavalry that I once was, and to be able to sit, <laughs> sit here and keep gentlemen of your rank <laughs> quiet while I spoke, <laughs> I couldn't resist the temptation. <laughs> Could I introduce each one of these to you, sir? Then? Yes. This is uh, Field, Field Marshal Bramble, who is uh, in the United Kingdom and the, and the uh, chairman of the Military Council. We're very together. We leave at much the same time, but I know our successors will keep up with that. General Corey Yager, who is the chairman of the Military Council. General Jerry Terrio from Canada. Hello, host for this tour. We're going to Canada as well as the United States. Admiral Liberal, pleased to see you. Spain. We enjoyed our recent visit there very much. General Giesenberg, Maurice Giesenberg from Belgium, good colleague. General Roberto Bartolucci from Spain. Well, we had a happy time in there in your country. Thank you. Lemos Ferreira from Portugal. Of the Congress working out and we will help with it. Alternarks from the Federal Republic of Germany. Pleased to have you here. Nicholas Live from, from uh, Luxembourg, and colleague. Pleased to have you here. Frederick Little Hansen from Norway. How do you do? Service Navarro from France. Nice to see you. Lava Wynn from Denmark. Hope Heiser from the Netherlands. Turkey's his chief couldn't make the trip. His wife became unexpected or unexpectedly ill and I'm sorry about that. Pleased to have you. And this is his Supreme Commander Allied for uh, the Atlantic, uh, Admiral West, or Admiral West McDonald. Yes. He's one of our, one of our, he's 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 one of Thank you, sir. Well, <laughs> pleasure to be here. Well, pleased to have you all here. Thanks very much. Thank, nice to thank you very much, Mr. President. Let's get some more good stuff. We're going to take them out and show them that strategic nuclear deterrent force that uh, you talked about. So we get some appreciation for the United States does that doesn't show up in the NATO forces, including the Canadians and the NATO forces. If you should remember the next time with the rest of the Chiefs of Staff, I am telling my story about Colonel Hayden. I just live with a sense of guilt. I left out one very important part of the story when I mentioned that I thought that his having me to dinner was because of Hollywood and so forth. I forgot to tell you that I had learned that it wasn't at all. What I learned subsequently was that in his first uh, appointment to the Temple of the Post as a second lieutenant, he had a very, I guess, unhappy experience. And he resolved then that if ever he was in the other position, he would make sure that any newly assigned officer was greeted that way. <laughs> and I left that out and afterward I thought, oh, you know, it wasn't fair to Colonel Booker. I, I will relay that story to him. So, all right. Good. Okay. So you know, the new officer's name. <laughs> yes. It's, 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 it's there. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.